new horizons. In a restless search for new opportunities and new ways of living, the mystery and the promise of distant horizons always have called men forward. First wondering, then searching, then continuing to explore, men have moved on and on, always to find that old horizons opened the way to new horizons. In a search that has continued for centuries, some far distant view with its promise of the unseen and its promise of the unknown has forever fathered the impulse to seek for new things in new places. New horizons, roads for men to go places. The accelerating rate of men's progress in all fields of endeavor has paralleled closely our progress in the freedom of movement from place to place. New things to do and new ways to do them. Telephone, electric lights, automobiles, aircraft, all are symbols of better living new places to go, and new means of getting there. With a growing appreciation of the wisdom of applying the road tax monies to the road building program for which they were designed, highway development is going on at a rapidly increasing pace. Created by the crossing of new horizons, new ways of living and new thinking have laid the foundation for most of what is good in life today, with the promise of more tomorrow. As distant families have become neighbors, and as people have constantly widened their viewpoints while multiplying the number of their contacts, more desires have developed to be satisfied. And with the demand for all of these conveniences and improvements, opportunities for employment of men, money and materials have increased. And thus the highways of social and commercial developments are widening without end or limit, except the imagination vision of men who do new things. Today, engineers are always leading us higher, widening the trails, while our men of science are broadening all our mental avenues with new activities, activities based on modern pioneering into new fields of research. Men exploring and pioneering for all to follow men endlessly seeking something new along the roads of civilization 
in the great unknown expanses of applied science and scientific research. All the new highways of research and exploration have brought to us more raw materials, new raw materials, new combinations of raw materials, new and greater productivity of the soil, making more plentiful an ever widening range of goods. And as these goods come down from the farm, the mine and the mill, progress on all the highways of human activity leads us to more opportunities for employment. An ever widening range of goods made ever more plentiful from east to west, from north to south. Our greatest strides in providing more things for more people have been made at a time when the influence of new geographical frontiers was about over. Mentally and physically, we are progressing toward new horizons. To help us get a glimpse into the future of this unfinished world of ours, there has been created for the New York World's Fair a thought-provoking exhibit of the developments ahead of us, the greater and better world of tomorrow that we in America are building today, a vivid tribute to the American scheme of living, whereby individual effort, the freedom to think, and the will to do have given birth to a generation of men who always want new fields for greater accomplishment and will always find new things for all others to enjoy. Come, let's travel into the future. What will we see? And now we have arrived in this wonder world of 1960, the World's Fair exhibit modeled with such artistry and skill that we must continually remind ourselves the world we are now seeing is a vision, an artistic conception which may undergo many changes as it develops into the great realities of tomorrow. Sunshine, trees, hills and valleys, flowers and flowing streams. This world of tomorrow is a world of beauty. These eternal things wrought by God are lovely and unchanging. Twenty years have passed. With new agriculture and industry, with new forms of education, recreation, a new world is constantly opening before us at an ever accelerating rate of progress. A greater world, a better world, a world which always will grow forward. Man has forged ahead. New and better things have sprung from his industry and his genius. Here is a modern farm. The farmer of 1960 works in greater security, for science and research have helped him to control many of the risks of agriculture. Hours of work have been shortened with almost universal electrification of rural areas. Fruit trees bear abundantly under individual glass housings. Orchards are protected against disease and insects. Science even influences pollination by artificial feeding. Does it seem strange, unbelievable? 
Remember, this is the world of 1960, and physics and chemistry have joined hands with the farmer in helpful friendship. Here are the farm roads of the community. They have been improved and made to flow into great motorways. This superb one-direction highway with its seven lanes accommodating traffic at designated speeds of 50, 75, and 100 miles an hour is engineered for easy grades and for speed with safety. Cars from the farm roads and feeder lanes join the motorway traffic at the same speed as cars traveling in the lane they enter. Here is an aeration plant purifying the lake water and distributing it for hundreds of miles throughout the countryside. Here is a highway intersection, highway engineering at its most spectacular. Traffic may move safely and easily without loss of speed. By means of the ramped loops, cars may make right and left turns at rates of speed up to 50 miles per hour. Elevated and depressed are the turning off lanes. There is no interference from the straight ahead traffic in the higher speed lanes. The motorist of 1960 finds this intersection safe and efficient. The two-directional traffic of the motorway, which merged at the intersection, separates again. The highway surface is automatically lighted by continuous tubing in the highway safety curbing, which evenly illuminates the road surface. What's this just ahead? An amusement park. 1960. Man's progress has brought more leisure for amusement and recreation, bringing them within easier reach of more people. Industrial communities have gone ahead by multiplying the conveniences and comforts of living. Hundreds of comfortable homes for workers. All people benefited by broadening their scope of living, gaining by advanced means of communication and new methods of work. Here is a thriving and prosperous steel town. Notice the furnaces glowing, river and rolling mills. In the foreground is a model airport an efficient combination of motor, air, and rail transportation in the world of tomorrow. And now we see an enlarged section of 1960's express motorway. Along the ledge of this beautiful precipice, traffic moves at unreduced rates of speed. Safe distance between cars is maintained by automatic radio control. Curved sides assist the driver in keeping his car within the proper lane under all circumstances. The keynote of this motorway, safety. Safety with increased speed. This 1960 drama of transportation progress is but a symbol of future progress in every activity made possible by constant striving toward new and better horizons. Now we see ahead a steep, challenging mountain climb. Here we see a quiet and peaceful religious retreat, seemingly growing from the rocks as it looks out over the lake and foothills. The slower lanes of the motorway wind in and about the foothills. But from this point on, tunnel and cling to the precipitous rock faces. One marvels at its complete accord 
with the breathtaking scenic beauty of its route. In the valley ahead, a picturesque resort town. Farther on is a canal with a series of flood control locks. And just beyond, a giant mountain lake dam with its spillway, companion buildings and hydroelectric power plants providing power and light for hundreds of miles around. The motorway continues through the mountains. Without tedious travel, the advantages of living in a small town are within easy reach, bringing the people who live there into closer relations with all the world around. Over space, man has begun to win victory. Space living, space for working, space for pay, all available for more people than ever before. Over a spectacular suspension bridge, the motorway enters a large city, spanning the navigable river on which it is situated and forming a gateway to the city. A feature of this bridge is the elimination of congestion and the elimination of interference from all the various converging motorways and from all the feeder roads. And now we see a great river city of 1960. Twenty years ago, the population of this city was approximately a million persons. It is much larger, rebuilt and replanned. Residential, commercial and industrial areas all have been separated for greater efficiency and greater convenience. A vast circular airport is close to the city with a giant dirigible hangar so that it can be turned easily to meet any wind direction it is resting in a pool of liquid. Outside is an airport with its hangars and planes. There are special facilities for handling sea of the inland airports of 1960. Here is an American city replanned around a highly developed modern traffic system. The parks of the city have continuity, proper placement. These areas are united into long green strips surrounding each community. Along both banks of the river, Beautifully landscaped parks replace the outworn areas of an older day. An industrial docking basin, newly completed, takes care of all the shipping from the adjacent industrial area. On all express city thoroughfares, the rights of way have been so rooted as to displace outmoded business sections and undesirable slum areas whenever possible. Man continually strives to replace the old with the new. A quarter of a mile high skyscraper's tower with convenient rest and recreational facilities for all. On many of the buildings are landing decks for helicopters and auto gyros. Rich in sunshine, is the city of 1960. Fresh air, fine green parkways, recreational and civic centers. Modern and efficient city planning, breathtaking architecture, each city block a complete unit in itself. Here is an important intersection in the great metropolis of 1960. Elevated sidewalks give a new measure of safety and convenience to pedestrians. They actually double the available width for traffic in the street. 
And so, we see some suggestion of the things to come. A world which, far from being finished, is hardly yet begun. A world with a future in which all of us are tremendously interested. Because that is where we are going to spend the rest of our lives. In a future which can be whatever we propose to make it. of us may have different ideas as to what that future will be, but every forward outlook reminds us that all the highways of all research and all communication, all the activities of science, lead us onward to better methods of doing things, with new opportunities for employment and better ways of living as we go on determined to unfold the constantly greater possibilities of the world of tomorrow, as we move more and more rapidly forward, penetrating new horizons in the spirit of individual enterprise, in the great American way.